Welcome to Social Elo Ministries, where we are committed to glorifying God while exposing the devil. There are times when the Lord will have a person do something, and it may be embarrassing. For example, the prophet Isaiah, the Lord had him walk around naked and barefoot for three years as a sign and wonder of something that was going to happen. But then there are times when the devil will put someone on display like that. But it's not for a godly purpose. It is for the person's embarrassment. Arguably, one thing that's worse than getting deceived is remaining in that deception. Have you ever seen a person who's basically faithfully waiting on the Lord for something that it has become painfully obvious that it wasn't the Lord who directed that person to do something? Or told a person that he was going to fulfill a promise. <sighs> there comes a time to realize when it's time to give up. Because what's it is, it wasn't from the Lord. <laughs> but some people, they'll still persist. And they laugh because it is a sad thing. Because sometimes it even ends in, in tragedy. But you may even try telling the person or people that they need to stop and it wasn't for the Lord, but they refuse to believe. In 2 Corinthians 11, starting verse 13, it states, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, and whose end shall be according to their works. So they speak about the devil masquerading as an angel of light. It also speaks about his ministers basically doing the same thing, pretending to be righteous. So, for example, you may have a false prophet, quote-unquote, prophesied to you, and you believe that false prophet, maybe not knowing it's a false, he or she's a false prophet, and you keep on waiting for that thing to come to pass. But the devil is basically stringing you along. Because a lot of times one of the techniques of the enemy is to get you looking in one direction where what the Lord has for you is coming in another direction. It could be such where the Lord brings something to you that he wants you to have where you refuse to accept it because you received a false prophecy from someone else and you're expecting it to come elsewhere. And there are a lot of ways where that can play out. So it's important to realize when something is of the Lord versus when it's not. And I think I'm going to call this still marching. Because I want to take a look at the story of Joshua. Now remember I mentioned about the devil masquerading as an angel of light. Now we're going to speak about a divine encounter where this was a truly heavenly being with a godly purpose, a godly assignment. And some key things to look out for. So start in Joshua 6, verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. So the walls of Jericho, the gates were shut. No one went in, no one came out. That presents an obstacle. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. So the Lord told Joshua to see, and he had given stuff into his hands. And the Lord is calling things that were not as if they were, because the Lord knew what was going to happen. But in the natural, Joshua saw an obstacle, a city surrounded by thick walls, 
and the doors were closed. But the Lord told him to see the victory. When the devil is masqueraded as an, as an angel of light or one of his ministers, they will tell you the same thing too, like, see beyond the obstacle. So you're waiting for something to break through, but it's not. And you have to know when to basically cease and desist because you've been misled. But in this case, and ye shall compass the city, and all ye men of war, and go round the city once, and thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day thou shalt compass the city seven times, and the priest shall bow with, or correction, shall blow with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass. Let me pause. So the Lord gave Joshua some specific instructions in Habakkuk 2 verses 2 through 3 it speaks about writing the vision making it plain basically so a herald can run with it because the vision awaits an appointed time a part of writing for example prophecies down is so that you get the exact words from the Lord or what a person is purporting to be the words of the Lord so that you know exactly what you need to do you don't deviate to the left or the right and if there's a time frame associated with it you know at one point in time to test the prophecy to ensure that it is off from the Lord. So the Lord gave Joshua specific instructions and says, and it shall come to pass. When you do exactly what you're told in the prophecy, it should come to pass. You shouldn't get any additional information later on saying, oh, you fail to do this or you fail to do that. No, everything must be stated up front. Because in order to, when a person states something after the fact, that is deception. That is a person trying to cover him or herself. Make it look as if it was your fault. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And then the key part. So after following all those, all those instructions, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. So again, after following those instructions, the wall of the city shall fall down flat. So basically, Joshua and the Israelites were supposed to do their part, and the Lord would do his. Same thing with you. You receive a message that you were told is from the Lord, you do your part, then the Lord is going to do his. But it's from the devil. You do your part, and he won't do his. And he and his cohorts will be laughing at you. And a part of the reason why I'm inspired to use Jericho, so this was supposed to happen on the seventh day. There are many people who have been marching around a Jericho of sorts, They've done all these things. The wall didn't fall. So on the eighth day, they went out again and started marching. Some a year, ten years later, they're still marching around the wall, even though the instructions only called for seven days before the breakthrough. And they refused to say, uh-oh, the devil got me. And then you tell people, well, I just got to keep on persisting and I'm going to get the breakthrough in a moment now. Come on now. You have to learn to realize when it's God or when it's not. Because one of the reasons why some people fail to desist is because they don't want to look bad. And in the process of not wanting to look bad, they end up looking worse because they're having faith in the wrong thing. In Joshua 6, verse 20, this is one of the ways to validate that Joshua had received the word of the Lord. So the priest, or correction, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets 
And it came to pass, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted at with and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and took the city. So go back to verse 5. It states, And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. That's what the Lord told Joshua. Then again in verse 20. So the people shouted with the, when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Some people are still shouting at their quote unquote wall of Jericho. They may think the wall is stubborn by not falling, but they fail to realize the wall is not falling because the Lord is not with them. So it is very important to realize getting deceived is one thing. Failing to realize that you've been deceived, that's another thing. Not Accepting the fact that you've been deceived takes it to an entirely new level. There comes a point to realize when something that you initially thought was of the Lord was not. And at that point in time, it is time to repent as opposed to persisting. I hope this helps. And this may not be for you, but you may know someone who's faithfully walking around the wall of a Jericho. And it has been more than long enough. There were two times when the Israelites were in the wilderness that the Lord told them that they had lingered in this place long enough. Sometimes up to you to at least try to tell the person you have been deceived. I hope this helps either you or someone else. But it's important to know when it's the Lord versus the devil. God bless you.